good morning boys and girls what a wonderful bit of morning we're having it was raining a little while ago as you can see it was raining cats and dogs there's a poodle and um, we have been tailed to expect <laughs> very mixed weather so I'm enjoying a little bit of sunshine out here on the quayside on the wath in yard while we can just show you tomatoes doing bonkers well this one fell over so i've had to tie it up just look at our cucumbers look at these God, could you get your gob around that and uh radishes and flowers and everything right so a couple of bits of news first off i'm just going to show you what's happening in the in the meadow because me and marley went to the meadow didn't we and it was good and we're going to try and save it from being builded on are you eating grass again we're back in the meadow look some people will remember that um about three years ago i got a sack of poppy seeds uh for, for a number of well big it's um is it 10 kilo five kilo no it must have been 10 kilos bloody heavy of poppy seeds and threw them all around here <laughs> well they worked <laughs> <laughs> um, however someone's been around and mowed some nice paths in here and I'm hoping that that might be the start of us trying to um, claim this as a village green Marley are you eating grass darling is it nice grass is it do we like this grass um, because it would be a terrible shame were they to uh, rip all this up and put 700 houses on here which is what the plan is you can ask yourself one fundamental question if you look at this on google earth you know google maps and do the uh, aerial view ask yourself 700 houses they're not going to be uh, <laughs> They're not going to be anything other than little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes made of tiki tacky. It's the theme from an American TV series sitcom. But it will give you an idea. 700 houses. Nope, they ain't going to be no quality houses. Are they, Marley? Bring it! Alright, that was the meadow. <laughs> that was probably the worst, the worst J-cut edit I've ever done. Um, next, we have a, an appearance on, on the um, towpath over there of lots more of these. Yes, it looks like it's the stuff to reinstate the towpath. As some of you will know, I have been banging on now for, well, since we got this place, anyway, 10 years, nine years, but longer than that, uh, since we've been using the, uh, the, the canal about the dire state of the towpath it really is criminal canal and river trust a couple of years ago we had the 200th anniversary of the uh, sheffield canal and i was embarrassed i was actually embarrassed and ashamed at the state of the towpath that people were walking down and <clears throat> especially kind of like there was a couple of mums went out for a walk one day with their babies in prams lovely beautiful came back covered in mud there was another wheelchair user came down and again came back and I said did you just find it impassable they said it's awful they said if this was anywhere else I'd be doing them under the Equality Act because this is not accessible and oh a bit windy a bit windy and the sun might be going in so Canal and River Trust just really didn't give a shit uh, they 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 were kind of like anyway and then of course they're using Covid now as an excuse for not not doing it 
uh, but it is it really is dire if that was a pavement there'd be claims going in left right and center and it's the same the same thing you know canal and river trust they're not really that bothered that and it's not really the cyclists fault but wherever there's huge rutting and muddy puddles the cyclists going through just make it worse it's not a cyclist fault it's the fault of crt because wherever you've got a nice hardened off towpath especially the bit between rotherham and halfpenny bridge where it's been done nicely the cyclists don't make you know they don't make the ruts the cyclists can enjoy it the same as everybody else the fishermen and walkers that's another thing that canal and river trust don't seem to don't seem to uh, really prioritize boaters they don't really like boaters they're an inconvenience but they they do like the people who don't pay to contribute like the walkers and the cyclists and whatever anyway that's that i want to talk about cider we're gonna make some cider at the gig we had here last week last friday um a couple of a couple of the people who, who turned up hello hendrika etc by the way had this idea that they implanted in me <laughs> oh, missed the train that we could be making some cider it's likely to be a reasonably good year for apples apparently don't know why because it's been a really shit summer so far here in sheffield uh, but um the idea is that we can have some group days where we can come along everyone can source some apples from their local community we can do a quick apple tasting and we'll do two to one so two sweet apples to one sour apple should give us a nice tart cider but, but, but drinkable as well so sweet but uh, with an edge of tartness and then get some blackberries or raspberries and whatever and do some mixed ciders in order to do that we need to be able to shred and press the fruit that's the main issue we've got everything else we need we've got yeah we've got fermenters and everything i've got some really good cider yeasts uh, that i've been saving so the first thing is how are we going to press that fruit and so um this is a little thing that i've done just giving uh, a couple of ideas and marley's about to go crazy because there's a dog walking along the towpath right so this is my idea for pressing the fruit there are two types of uh, fruit press one is where you've got a bucket with slats around the outside so circular and there's slats i'll see if i can find a photo to put up uh, you then put a bag in here and you fill it with your pulp then fold your bag in and then there's a a, a block which fits snugly so inside the press uh, you've got this is your Yes, and so that then pushes down and then all of the juice flows out into a jug doesn't make a lot of sense does it well, actually it probably does uh, the two types are you you put downward pressure here or there's um, a threaded bar comes up and then you put a plate on top of your plunger I suppose and then you turn a collet on here with a big handle and as that turns this then comes down pushes down now that's that's one type of press the other way of doing it is a little bit like with a bench press um, where you have a frame I haven't drawn that very straight have I not a lot gets straight with me there we are so i would class it as a steel frame and then you get essentially some square frames so um probably no more than six inches yeah i'm not a drawer either i'm not a filmmaker or a drawer and I've drawn that wrong. It doesn't matter. Look, you know what I'm getting at, don't you? All right? So, that's a frame. Then you put a sheet of muslin or whatever over the top and press it in. Fill it with your pulp. Then fold all this over. And you end up with kind of like a 
cake or cheese. I'm making a right bollock of this, and I sorry. So this is your cheese of uh, cheese of pulp wrapped up in muslin. You take the wooden frame off, boom, and then you set your wooden frame on there, and you put your sheet of muslin or whatever over and you fill that full of pulp and then you fold it over and what you end up with is um, a stack of these little parcels on here and then you put a block of wood on top and use a, a, a bottle jack um, to push all this down and then the juice all sort of like pours in a uh, tray underneath and then out into a um, a jug. Let me show you what I mean by that. So this is my six ton press that I use for making the coin rings and for punching the hole out of the middle of the coin rings. And you operate it thus and it pushes down, but this then would be a plate on top of these uh, wrapped up wadges of pulp and as it pushes down it compresses them and all the juice would then flow nice juicy flow so that's the second option now really there's no significant difference as far as i can see in the effectiveness of either of these because what you're doing is you're taking the pulp and squishing it to get the juice out I like this because I think it would be easier to build I like this because it would look nicer this <coughs> excuse me this we could very very easily build and then provided it was if these joints here were bolted the whole thing could literally fold flat and be packed away nicely. This would take up space. Gonna need to be quite big. If we're going for this sort of size, it needs to be at least 36 liter for the sort of quantities that we're gonna to wanna to do. This isn't quite as dependent. We could do one, two, four, even eight cakes in here. We'd have the space. Now, I think that's I think that's fairly straightforward. If we can't buy it, I'd like to make it because I don't think this would be that difficult to make, provided we can get a twenty-ton bottle jack. I've seen thirty-ton bottle jacks on um, something that sounds like amazing um, for about forty, fifty quid. So it could be reasonably cheap to make. Here's the second thing. Before you can press anything, you need to take your apple. Look at that, not bad, not bad drawing for a start, is it? Not bad. And you need to turn it into pulp. Now there's several ways you can do that. The, I think it's called scratting, which sounds very, very much, never mind, scratting, which is where you have a hopper um, and you drop your apples in the top you could cut them up and then here is a, a wheel with either blades or sticky outy bits and these can be homemade if you if you take a um, a block of wood which is rounded it and um, screw uh, stainless steel nails in as that turns it it shreds the apples into little slivers and you could also do that with um, pears, other fruits. So that's the most common sort of way of 
or shredding you can you can get these pre-made and they got a, a a handle on them and you just turn it others have got a kind of like a wheel on there with a handle sticking out that you again you just turn another way is you chop your apples up using a, a, a you know a knife as we call it and then you put them into a bucket and then you get a big stick um, and you just smash them to pieces in there that is highly labor intensive and takes a very very long time a pulper or um, shredder or I'm, I'm fairly sure it's called a scratter um, is, is a much easier way of doing it now I think that could be again buildable and I have got actually let me show you this is a motor from a pillar drill if you don't know what a pillar drill is it doesn't really matter but it's a it's a fairly slow slowish rpm motor and i took this off but this is a means of stepping down the power so using a fan belt it wouldn't be too difficult to have this turning that small pulley driving a bigger pulley here and turning the scratter or the, the blades or the um, block of wood with nails in it, turning it round slower. You don't want it like that because it would just splatter it all everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. Look at that. Artistic. Um, so it needs to be reasonably slow to act as a, um, a shredder. I think that would probably do it. So there we have the makings of a plan. If this could all be built easily enough, I, I think that's the way to go. Using, I mean, this whole thing could be made out of wood. We just need to have on here a fairly large um, pulley going to the small motor pulley. So that would be the motor here. box it all in this would somehow need to have I I'm guessing we could have a chute here and then box over the top of that because what we don't want is for people's hands to be able to get into there and then be pulled through because I suppose you could make cider out of fingers but pff, you get an interesting color I suppose uh, so safety obviously being the prime factor here but here's the thing is 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 that would be quite a large contraption with a bucket underneath on legs that would be a large contraction contraption that would take up a lot of space which is a yeah one of our things at the moment which we don't have lots of but anyway that's so that's the idea around the cider stroke perry stroke fruit press and by the way look at what a friend of mine did get for us some made by martin pens isn't that nice and she said you can uh, give them away or sell them or whatever so if anybody wants one they're on the website just as a, a token there we are right so ideas please below if you're um if you're so inclined I've got everything we need really for the actual brewing and storage and serving and all that sort of thing but it's the the scratching the actual pulping of the fruit and then the pressing so volunteers to help build this please Chris oops <laughs> and Simon and <laughs> form an orderly queue guys form an orderly queue um lucy and uh, we can everybody else mark um we can probably get something ready by apple season for those who are not technically minded or mechanically minded that's fine if you want to come along to the boathouse and help make it you can also then help drink it just some activities that i want to get going for the end of the summer 
it'll be free um, preference given to boathouse members there's a link I'll put a link down below in the comments down there underneath or in the description about how to join the boathouse social but um, any ideas contributions faults with my analysis please stick them down below in the comments please don't criticize my drawing I'm not a drawer or a hard artist. Well, I'm a sort of artist, but only when it comes to being a piss artist. For now, I hope that makes sense. Thank you very, very much for your time and contributions that will follow. If you like this rubbish, please subscribe to the channel um, to see how how this nonsense goes. It will be in the in the thing on the side. It will say brew because I do lots of different stuff on this channel. Uh, it's not designed to get billions of viewers or whatever. It's purely a little slice of my life. So I put on the left in the thumbnail what it is, whether it's boat, brew, beer, all that sort. You know what I mean? Do you? Right. They're all four-letter words, by the way. Cheers. Whatever you're doing, please do it safely.